<laughs> Wait, first of all, where are we? I haven't explained where we're at. Um, your, George's uncle's house, uh, we will call him Jeff. And he, he was also the proprietor of the compound, the lake compound that we stayed at for the last couple of days, which we should have some footage of. And you know, he seemed like a nice guy. He had some cool toys out at the, uh, the lake. And he is a very nice guy, but like the guy's taste in cars is just ridiculous. Like, I, I mean, he's got a smart car. Like, who buys stuff like that? Like, I would really, you know, you know, as much money as the guy has, you think he would be spending his money on like cooler toys. But you know, I don't, I mean, if I were, <clears throat> if I were that wealthy, I would definitely be spending on new cooler stuff than you know, a smart car. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's so many better cars out there. I mean, you know, that have heritage and you know a legitimacy other than you know um, uh, a smart car. I mean, come on. There, there's nothing like more offensive to a you know a motorsports personality than a smart car. <laughs> a smart car. A smart car. But um, yeah, it's just it's it's almost offensive. Like I, you know. <laughs> Just a little. Uh, so we're on to oil change number uh, four or five. Oh it's, no, it's got to be like six. So we've done just a camera update. We've driven 9,218 miles so far. We're gonna try to show you the bottom of this oil pan. Oh wow, that shows up really well. Those are all old metal shavings. Those little, they look gold, but they're actually silver. Let me sort of tell um, you smear. So the question is, which bike is this coming out of? That's a lot. I feel like I'm lot. panning for gold. Yeah. Where is this coming from? I mean, the bike had 6,000 miles on it. Now it's got like 14. So it's likely not, you know, like break in dust or whatever. Piston ring remnants. <sighs> Who knows? to enlightenment. We've done the only reasonable thing and stop at another brewery. <laughs> Woo! There, nothing says uh, um, introspection and zen like free beer. Alcoholics are known for their uh, introspection. Yeah. Really much to the detriment of really everyone. Really deep. Uh, we're plugging along along 90 alternate and saw a Shiner. Middle of Texas. Yeah, really middle of, I guess, East Texas. And saw, saw Shiner, Texas, which it's a fairly popular beer called Shiner Bach, which I presume is the namesake of this place. So, you know, at this point we're heading towards an exhilarating week of camping in the swamps of, you know, the Gulf of Mexico, so our spirits are average. Uh -huh. Sitting on a curb at night in Galveston, Texas. So, so we made it to you know, more or less our destination. Now it's just a question of how much further we want to go towards New Orleans tonight. So apparently the ferry runs 24 hours, so we don't have to worry about camping on the beach and waiting for the first ferry tomorrow. Um, as I was driving along, I'm realizing that Texas, like other than we probably have more footage of South Dakota than Texas. I think we're just like having some camera fatigue. Like we've only got one camera, we have to stop because our other one that mounts the bike is broken, and we're just tired of stopping and turning them on. It's a lot of scenery. I mean, generally speaking, you say like you know I'm fine doing a little planning, a little preparation, and adventure will find you. But of late, we've just been, you know, between luck and some planning and some good connections, just you know, not even working that hard and dodging trouble at every turn. So, at this point, what do we... It's just a plan for this. I mean, at least mechanically, we didn't want to have any problems because that could yeah. be the hair's width away from death on a motorcycle. Yeah, I mean, we have lots of cool ideas for trips where we drive shitty cars that break down on us, but if yeah, a motorcycle... It's stable. Yeah, a motorcycle breaks down on you and, like, it's not like a, a wacky roadside repair, it's a fiery wreck at 80. So we found a very gregarious raccoon. What are you doing, dude? Hey, you got rabies. Yeah. You, people feed you? It's going over my bag. Oh, what he's expecting to find in there. Yeah, well he smells the food. There's like the rice packs and stuff. Oh, there. wow, he can smell through that shit? He's, woo!
your favorite part about our campsite? Oh, I don't know if it's the, uh, the beautiful marshland and its array of fauna. Oh, sorry, mosquito. It's really the, the entomology that interests me most. Mosquitoes, okay. I've always found a really fascinating study into, uh, you know, making me fucking uncomfortable. So there's that. Yeah. There's how wet it is. There's all the unnatural light. God, there's fucking mosquitoes everywhere. Um, and, you know, just in case that wasn't enough, there's a giant dead wild boar. Giant? There. It was probably like a 200 pound boar. Do think you think that's all? It's a giant goddamn animal, which, you know. We'll make sure we get a footage of it. Yeah, we'll definitely. It's dead and it's, you know, rig them oh, God damn it. Yeah, I mean, and fortunately it's dead, but the, you know, really enormous fresh tracks all around it are, are less dead. Alright, we're going to stop filming soon. The bugs are too bad, but this campsite sucks. Hopefully the next video isn't us fighting off a wild boar. Well, we listened to you, America. We know what you wanted, and it was us sleeping in weirder places. I'll have to, who does this, isn't this, what this thing evolves into. So, you can sort of see we're by some little bridge. Which is basically in the swamp, which I, it took me a while to get to sleep last night, but it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Yeah, and then I wake up and I realize I'm sleeping on a goddamn crowbar. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is wander down and videotape that giant boar we saw, that dead boar. That freaks out a little bit. Like, shit, I hope this is not what we have to expect when we're down here. Giant dead boar. It looks like somebody wrapped the shit up. What the fuck is this thing doing here? That's fucking disgusting. Look. This, we're right on the border of Louisiana right now, basically. Welcome to Louisiana, fuckers. We are a couple hundred miles away from Louisiana. It's on Friday. So with any luck, we can find a hostel, take a shower, and go downtown Louisiana tonight. Maybe meet some some Nolliners. Have some gumbo. Maybe some Creoles they keep hearing about. Which I heard about like I don't know, it was a great history class. We are in our American hostel for the first time in America. We're paying for places to stay, but it's under $20 a piece a night for these fine accommodations. So, I suppose a little bit like feet, but I've come to decide it's us. It's actually your feet. All right, I get cleaned up, feel sorry for ourselves a little bit, and then go downtown. See recording. Um, well, as usual, we'll start off by apologizing for not filming enough. I guess if there's a night that expresses to us the importance of having a camera crew, it was last night because there is, you know, the last like 24 hours have been pretty insane. Uh, Eden and I ended up getting in a really nasty fight that turned to blows that. Uh, I just came back around to yelling and, you know, I was pretty unhappy about it. So, I, you know, I wasn't throwing in the towel on the trip, but I wasn't interested in finishing it together. So, I mean, I guess the transgression was, uh, we started off coming back drunk with our Italian friend, and then, let's see, I think we disagreed about whether or not New Orleans could be a cool place to live, and then the argument just kept going farther and farther below the belt until uh, I went way below the belt 
and uh, Ian, Ian stabbed and, and threw a, a pretty threw a pretty good punch. He got pretty well landed, picked off this uh, this side here, and uh, yeah, I was shocked. I wouldn't call it a sucker punch because you know everyone knew it was coming. So yeah, I can't really fault him for sneaking one in on me. I think it was pretty clear where that situation was going. So um, we continued screaming. I mean. Put on a show for it must have been you know, 30 people must have walked by and picked up that. So, isn't mean the arguments are never about what you're arguing about. It's, I guess, to digress. I don't really know how I feel about like anything that's happened. I mean, you know, not that I don't share in some of the fault, but you know, I think that he's sorry. Um, and you know, I guess. In some ways, I'm responsible for not talking about and being angry with him. Like, if you don't tell the other person, they have no way of correcting it. It's something I've heard before. So, George is outside right now, talking to the other journal camp. Um, probably about what transpired last night. And what transpired last night was that we went down to Bourbon Street and um, got you know, ingested some alcohol and uh, ended up getting in a fight in the middle of the street on St. Charles Street. I ended up punching Jordan in the face. Um, there's a little black eye and his nose is a little swollen. So you're wondering, like, yeah, like, you should never resort to physical violence. And, you know, use your words, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I am a lover, I'm not a fighter. I don't resort to violence. Um, but, I mean, George said some very hurtful things, and I guess, you know, my feelings got hurt, and um, I felt like he was picking a fight. And so I punched him in the face, which I guess was the only logical thing to do. So anyway, so obviously things were pretty tense last night. It was very mean things were said. Um, I wake up this morning with George trying to coyote ugly me. Um, he was like walking out the door with all his gear on and he was heading for Key West. Um, more or less, I felt because he was upset about what had happened and you know, trying to teach me a lesson or whatever. Um, uh, unfortunately, he says that, you know, I had been getting on his nerves for weeks now uh, and, you know, just hasn't said anything to me about it. But, um, anyway, so, you know, I, I ran after him. But regardless, I mean, we're talking about 2,000 miles, and my um, enjoyment, like, I would enjoy it substantially less if, it, if, you know, if George wasn't there. I mean, we got in a fight, you know, I apologized, you know. They, I mean, within, within friends, perhaps things should never really resort to violence, but I would, uh, I would hate to have to rehash the conversation. <laughs> The lover's quarrel we got into in the middle of fucking New Orleans as pedestrians rolled by and there was two you know, grown men yelling at each other. Um, anyways, most, I mean, things aren't terribly tense anymore. Um, we worked it out. Apparently, we came to the conclusion that both of us have, you know, glaring character flaws. Who, who knew? I don't know, like... I still feel bad. That's how I feel about the whole situation. Like a little disgusted with my um, my actions, you know. <sighs> the fact that I had to wash my hair without shampoo. So, <laughs> leaving New Orleans. Slowly. Very slowly. We're packing up and giggling like a uh, fucking slumber party. We were up late. Yeah, and so I'm gonna go over a big bridge and see a beach. And so, I'm videotape. With the door handle on that cargo. That seems efficient. This car has not moved in some time. We haven't fixed my exhaust leak. Both of us need to tighten our chains. Not. We did lube them, and I put oil in my bike, so that's thoughtful. It's thoughtful. Yeah. I feel on bike. Mm -hmm. 
despite the bug bites, what if I say like this, the black eye and the temporary tattoos, let's see this way, <clears throat> um, and these, uh, but still, still get picked up. So we were riding along, <clears throat> and the guy in this nice uh, 70s R80 BMW pulls up next to Ian and yells at him like, hey, you guys wanna go grab a drink? Like, Sure. So we, uh, we started talking. He's like, well, you know, we got a spare room. If you guys want to stay here, I was going to barbecue chicken. Then we were talking about, uh, he's like, so well, do you guys need any work done? I've got a shop. I'm like, well, actually, I need an exhaust gasket. So we're actually going to salvage one off his old Honda 750. And now we're looking around at his collection of nice cars. This is quite a collection. I don't, I don't know what to do either. I'm just sort of stumbling around. Wait a minute. So they can drink more. So they can pay $2 more to drink more and not get a good buzz on. Yes.